this friend mm -hmm. and he had told me he was having all these problems with his wife but I go to Facebook and there he is on Facebook looking so happy oh my wonderful wife what a great evening out we had blah 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 so I'm getting all excited because I think they've patched it up so I call to congratulate him and find out what's been going on and all of that and I can't reach the guy for a month so now I'm getting concerned but I'm still seeing happy pictures okay so he kept posting yeah he kept posting so I finally get hold of him and I go, where have you been? He goes, oh, I've just been so depressed and, really? you know, yes, things were worse than ever. They were getting a divorce. She wasn't living in the house. And I'm like, excuse me, I am confused. Hmm. I mean, really, you're, you're fronting on this level hmm. and you're struggling on this hmm. level. You know, I think, I think it happens to the best of us. You know, I mean, people see my pictures, for instance, on Instagram or Facebook and, you know, I, I look happy. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm the happiest yeah. person. I'm, I, really, I, I get some of the comments, oh my God, I wish I was like you. I want to be just like you, da, mm -hmm. da, da. But the days that I post happy pictures that I'm so depressed. I really? Have, yes, but Michelle. Why do you guys do that, though? You, you, you know, because sometimes, you know, it's, it's uplifting. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes in, in a quest to uplift myself, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm hoping that my picture would uplift others. I don't know if I'm making, you know, mm -hmm. any yeah, sense, yeah, but yeah. when I'm depressed, I'm not going to put a, a, a depressed picture of me mm -hmm. on, on the internet, mm -hmm. you know? And when I look at that picture I put of me that is probably a pretty picture, it helps some, I think. Yeah. But don't you think you know? you're affecting other people if you don't put the right thing there for people to know what's really going so on? So would you rather I put a picture of me um, looking disheveled and not, not, not probably almost in tears crying because I cry a lot but you know, <laughs> well I think that keeping it real yeah yeah I is and, and, and for someone like you too because mm -hmm. of, of the level you're on mm -hmm. as well as myself mm -hmm. when I'm feeling down I will write something I'll say how I feel, but then I'll add the hope and say, you know, maybe today yeah. I'm feeling like this, <laughs> yeah. but I know God's going to fix this or whatever. Yeah. Just so that people know that there's a real life in here exactly. and you have a real well, life. Well, sometimes, sometimes it's not even about how you're feeling. Sometimes I'm having a ba bad hair day. I'm not going to post my bad hair day on. on, on oh, no, 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 no. You don't have exactly. to. Exactly. There's yes, image yes. to a <laughs> most definitely. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if you must be sad, look fabulous while you're sad. <laughs> It's important to look yeah. fabulous while you're yeah, saying. Exactly. <laughs> I have a very ugly cry. So I don't want to put that on Instagram for anyone people, to people, see. People have this mentality that celebrities or people like mm -hmm. you don't have any worries at all. Right. You guys are always putting fabulous things out there. And that's depressing. Yeah. Let, Let me look. tell you, because, because people like to know that they're not alone. Yeah. yeah. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. actually... I mean, sometimes I actually get depressed when I see people's lives on Facebook and I go, Thank you. Where did I go wrong? Yes, Why am I not yes. living this look, kind of look, life? Look, <laughs> look the, the, people, the people in the limelight, right. I think that could can be the, the loneliest, mm -hmm. if you yeah. ask me. Yeah. Robin Williams, case in point. I mean, exactly. this guy's a funny guy. He mm -hmm. makes people, I love him. I think he's so funny. Right. He, he made people laugh, so. but he was going through depression. Mm -hmm. You know? And nobody knew. When I finished filming, I mean, I get, I, I, I dip. Because it's a very lonely world when it comes to these, when you, when you reach a certain level or mm -hmm. when you're on your way up, you know? Um, and that's why when I, heard, when I first heard about Robin Williams, I was like, you know what? Initially, I was like, why would he do that? He has so much going for himself. And I had to catch myself and say, you know what? I go through it myself. Mm -hmm. And after every production, everybody has become like family. I'm, I'm living in the character for a minute. <coughs> And then I have to get out, and then I face reality again. It, 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 it can be very depressing. Mm -hmm. But know? I think that you need to know that it's not just emotional, what's happening to you at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. You've been working hard. You've been under tremendous stress. Mm -hmm. And the body, physiologically, its mechanism for regaining energy is to depress, mm -hmm. to make you stop for a minute. Um, you know, because it's not just, depression isn't all emotional. You know that, right? So there's so, good depression and bad depression. That's what you're saying. Yeah, some of it is just physical. Physical depression. Like, if you've really been strenuous and, and been under a lot of stress or you've been working at a high level of energy for a long, sustained time, 
the body literally shuts down. It's like a little, it's got like a little fuse box inside mm. that just flips off. Mm. And then you don't feel like doing anything. You don't feel like eating. And that's mm. the body's way of saying, okay, stop. Mm. I need to refuel yeah. and get my energy supply mm. back up. Yeah. So it's not just emotional. I'm yeah. sure that there's, there's kind of like that postpartum uh, depression yeah. because you, yeah. you've worked with a group of people for yeah. a long time. Like when I was in plays, that used to happen because yeah. you worked together for months and then all of a sudden, where is Where's everybody? everybody? No, I, I think, Grace, you think that is because of the breakdown of the extended family because, you know, back in the day, you live in a house, you have your grandmother, your auntie, your mm -hmm. uncles, your cousins, your nephews, and nieces, everybody's in know, one house and everybody's in everybody's business sort of. But now we've all been very nucleated. So could it also be that... Isolation. Know, isolation, exactly. So now I if I leave set and there's a bunch of people that sort of the crowd and every the noise the every, everything that sort of helps you know give me that Distract, euphoria yeah. exactly and i come back home it's just me and my daughter probably my mom and that's it and there's nobody else that's really sad it's really sad before it wasn't like that mm -hmm. you know um let's say 20 years ago where you go to your grannies mm -hmm. i mean during christmas when everybody's together I know. you know that that feeling the mm -hmm. feeling if you're sad i mean there's so much joy around yeah so yes there's joy you don't even think about your issues or your problems right mm. yeah so yeah. i mean it helps a lot but right now social media has actually taken our lives yeah. mm -hmm. you'll be with your mom and your daughter but everybody be on their phone yes it's true we don't talk it, exactly we so don't talk true. at all exactly life so is true. on the phone your phone yeah. becomes your family yeah. yeah it's hurting a lot of people it is so yeah. your phone is not there you, you I mean, I mean, having a hundred thousand followers on Instagram doesn't translate to having a hundred thousand friends. Exactly, that's yeah, true. That's the thing. As but well. do you know, people actually get like upset about if they get liked, unliked, unfriended, uh, <laughs> followed. It's the person you know. Too. That's I did not look at and say, "Just has got a hundred thousand yes, followers. Person. I've only got twenty. What's wrong know. with me?" You know. So then, I, I think the social media has set up this whole other thing that makes us compare ourselves so mm -hmm, much more. Mm -hmm. You see people living lavish lives, you want more in your life, you get depressed because you, you don't yeah, have it, yeah. you don't know how to get it, and you start comparing yourself. Somebody's ahead of you in, their fi in your field, and you're wondering, well, how they get there, and I'm still here, and it opens up so many yeah. things. Yeah, and sometimes some of the things that are put on there are not what they seem. Exactly. You know, all these lavish weddings, this, you know, all these expensive gowns, yeah. and all these, you know, I think proposals were rented people will rent some of the gowns and then i mean take it back afterwards sure yeah yeah so of course just just for the gram yes, and then yes. i look at it and i'm like oh I'm I'm that, I'm I'm that. proposing. right you know sometimes a woman proposes to the man yeah but then on social media it looks the opposite yeah. i mean like i said right. it's is, is it deception that is really costing all these things because i mean i will I look so. at your life on instagram and it's probably not as fab as it seems i'm not mm. to say you but right. i mean like, let's say sure. someone's page and it would it, it, it becomes like the margin that I sort of measure myself. It's it's competition, you know. <coughs> but could it could it be that deception that is really causing all this, is, you know, is. dipping into depression? Because I'm sometimes I, like you're saying, I see my colleagues and I'm like, eh, so where did I go wrong? What's exactly. Happening? Why you know why is it happening for them and it's not happening exactly? For me? And it's not jealousy. It's just you're wondering. You start to question yeah, yourself. You start you to, question start to compare. Yeah. In comparison is like an avalanche that yeah. can take you down that, that path to depression. You're mm -hmm. right. I mean, yeah. earlier today I was looking at uh, this friend of mine has gotten this really amazing opportunity and I was really happy for them. And I know that they deserve it. I know the work they put in for that. But it made me question myself. Mm -hmm. Am I not disciplined enough? Do I not work no. hard enough? Yeah. You know, why not me? Why am I not at that level? And I literally, I started that downward dip and I had to say, ah, wait a minute. Actually, do you know women worry the most? Women are the most depressed. You're right. Because women worry about the silliest things, things that you're not supposed <laughs> to worry about. We like what? I mean, what do you mean silliest thing? We have to worry. No. I think weight. men also worry. You're gaining weight. Yeah. They're worrying well, about yeah. that. I'm because worried about that right now. Fat. You know, I don't have a Marital boyfriend. Marital status. Yeah. Why yeah. well, am I single? You can't even tell your friends I'm single. You can't because... Everybody has a part, everybody's going out, everybody's married, and you at 33 still. And if the society is putting so much pressure on the women, so they, we tend to worry so much mm -hmm. for nothing. And, and then that, that sort of I know takes us to that level exactly, of depression. Exactly, yeah. exactly. We get there. Mm. We get there. Could it be that we become more selfish, you know, as, as a people? Is the, the world is changing. Yeah. It's become a lot more harder, but are we also getting a lot more greedy? We want more than we can actually 
um, oh, sort of, of achieve. You understand what I'm saying? We, we, some of the things that we want are far fetched, but we want them. You know, mm -hmm. is it is it is it the times? Is it what the world is sort of becoming? And are we sort of following blindly? What what is going on? I mean, well, I think we're exposed to more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with social media. You get to see more. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't miss it till you saw it. You yeah. know what I mean? So. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, there's that. I want I, some. I think I want that. Mm -hmm. And if you can't get it, then you're depressed. The, yeah. Yes. Mm. So today I was on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I was looking for a paper bag. Mm -hmm. So I go on Instagram, and my friend tell, shows me this page that this girl makes paper bag. Mm. I was like, paper bag? I can do that too. So what the hell am I sitting here not doing this? And she right. says, oh, you can go here, go there, and do it yourself. I was like, okay, then I'll do it myself. But sitting down thinking of the stress I'm going to go through to just get <laughs> this thing done, I was like, it's depressing. I yeah. won't put myself through that. Yeah. But sometimes when you sit back and look at yourself, 10 years from now, five years ago, where was I? Yeah. Have you done better? Have you improved? Has something changed in your life? Yeah. I mean, if it's positive. But, must, but something always changed in your life. I mean, I think that's, that's why we're getting depressed. Mm -hmm. Because really, mm -hmm. if I look at my life five years ago, and I look at it now, and... I feel like nothing has really changed. Really? I'm going, I'm going to really cry and probably... But then, you see, that's the thing. You said, really? Maybe I'm too hard on myself. How mm -hmm. about that? Well... You understand? Maybe yeah, for me, yeah. I feel like, you know what? I could have done a lot more. Yes. You probably on the outside think, think that I've done so much. Okay. But I feel like, look, looking at my life five years ago and now, boy, I don't, haven't done anything. Yeah. And maybe we're too hard on ourselves. I think so. Yeah. But again, that's like this invisible... Um, unobtainable standard that's been set that's mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. that we keep comparing ourselves to mm -hmm. because I mean I'm saying really because it's like come on girl mm -hmm. I mean where you where you were five years ago where you are now at leaps and bounds I mean I moved to Ghana what six years ago so I can see the difference but okay I can say mm -hmm. the same thing about mm -hmm. myself that you know I go oh I haven't done anything mm -hmm. and then somebody mm -hmm. goes what you wrote 40 books mm -hmm. what do you want you know so I think that we are our worst critics Mm -hmm. And that there, I always say, um, let me set you free. Uh, there's always going to be somebody more er than you, prettier mm -hmm. than you, mm -hmm. richer than you, smarter than you, than you. Like more, that. more, you know, Everything successful, you. you know, successful -er yeah. than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, there's going to always be somebody more er than you. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got to learn to make peace with yourself. But if you don't. You're going to stress yourself out and it become depressed. It takes a lot depressed. of strength to do that. Yes. It does. It takes a yes. lot of strength. Yes. It's easier said than done, Michelle. I know. You know. I mean, yesterday I was telling a friend of mine. I'm I'm very health conscious, and lately I've realized that um, I can't I can't control the weight as mm -hmm. much as I used to. Oh yeah. Um, like five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a friend of mine said to me, you know, it's something about the weather. I think you can lose the weight. Uh -huh. You know, this weather sort of um, bloats you up. Mm -hmm. And then, right that minute, well, like a few minutes later, I, get a, I got a call from a friend who said she's very depressed because she's also gained a lot of weight and she's finding out and reading something about the food we're eating mm -hmm. and there's some GMOs or fertilizers that are being used mm -hmm. are not good for us and it's affecting us and that's how come, you know, we're getting big and it's affecting sometimes the brain, <coughs> our psyche, you yeah. know, the brain is not really, that's why people are even committing suicide lately. And I'm thinking, you know what? That makes sense. That makes sense. But yes. what, what is going on? Well, they are pumping a lot of stuff into food. I mean, it, just think about it. If they're putting something in the chicken to make the chicken plumper, and then you eat the chicken, <laughs> <laughs> you get plumper with yeah. the oh, chicken. The tomatoes right up. Okay. You know. You know um, or even like salt. Mm -hmm. You know, we love our salt, mm -hmm. but it's bad, and it's a blow. You know, it bloats you up. Mm -hmm. Sugar is another one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is just a killer on your system. But can you and eat it, without those things? Can you yes, not? you can. Are you living without them? I I actually have them to a minimum. I mean, I'm always fighting to bring Min, these things you know, down. Min, minimum is re is relative. Yeah. Because you know, you get sugar blues. You know, bl sugar can actually make you depressed. Really? Yes, yes because it yes. takes you up. Yeah. And then you crash. crash. Yeah, yeah. Coffee so, as well. Exactly. Yeah. So all these things you have to and alcohol. watch. Alcohol as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of these things are stimulants, but then you just crash and burn, and mm -hmm. then your system just, you, you feel more depressed than when you started. 
Now, alcohol as, as well, yeah. you know, a lot of people use that to sort of Feel better. get away from their, their, their problems, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just but for a moment. Then what happens? You go back to reality. But my friend was telling me drinking alcohol for her, I mean, to, be, I mean, to forget about her problems for just five minutes, she is okay. Then after five minutes, you, you... She doesn't care if she comes back to reality. But for the five minutes break she's going to have, it's going to change her life. Mm. She mm. prefers to be drunk, mm. really drunk. Wow. Yes. It makes her feel better. And then once she's once the, once the alcohol wears off, yeah, she goes back she's to reality. Over, yeah, back to reality, and then yeah. the problems are still. It's, it's you see, worse. The, the time you're using to, to, to your time you're spending drinking the alcohol, mm -hmm. you could you could be trying to find solutions to the problems you're having. Right. She says right? the problems will go nowhere. So she she actually prefers to drink and feel better for at least. But that's not sustainable. I mean, I at some point that. you have to deal with the reality of your world. And the thing is, is that when you escape and you come back, it kind of magnifies it. It's exactly. bigger than it was mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. So it's best to just stay sober mm -hmm. and deal with it. Mm -hmm. Now you have worked a lot of mental, well, you work closely yeah. to some of them. And I'm sure you've seen some <coughs> women mm -hmm. in, you know, in, 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 a, in a state of, you know, depression, yeah. almost mental. Mm -hmm. um, Half the time, I hear stories about men driving these women to do this to themselves. or well, not to do this, but to get to this point. You know, relationships, bad, you can get stuck in a bad relationship mm -hmm. that could cost you forever. Mm -hmm. And I hear when you go to that, when you cross over to that side, coming back this way, there's always a little left. Yeah. You always leave something, you know, there's always that, that stare. Yeah. yeah. That blank stare it, that I know. Yeah. tells people that, you know, there's something wrong. If mm -hmm. women will actually know their worth mm -hmm. and know that relationship is not everything, you can be happy on your own. There's so much you can do for yourself. If women know their worth, I don't think there'll be like more women at the psychiatric hospitals. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. people, women are dead because their, hus their husband left them or their relationship was bad. Why was the relationship? You can't, you, some things are there you can't change. Men will always be men. What about you? What can you do for yourself? Mm -hmm. Some women are in bad relationship because my kids. <coughs> I can't leave this marriage because of the kids. Can't and you? you're not even talking to anybody. Anybody. You're depressed. You come to, you go to work with a big smile on your face, thinking everything is okay. There are people walking around smiling, laughing with us. Have we thought about when they go home, when you're alone in your room, on your bed? What's going through their mind? Mm. We don't reach out to people. Because mm. some people are there, naturally they are very quiet. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to know whether there's something wrong or yeah. not. Others are loud. So when their mood changes, you know there's something Even wrong. Even the loudest people have a very nice way of hiding. Yes, so yes. I hide mine very well sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, and I'm think loud. You have yeah. to really be sensitive yes, to recognize signs. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. The withdrawal, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know. Just the dullness that happens. Yeah. Even just the stare. Really looking yes, at people's yes, eyes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was saying, you, know. you know, I, I was telling you earlier mm -hmm. that um, I know this girl. And, um, you know, I know that she's very, she was, she was a very ambitious young girl mm -hmm. at the time when I met her. And I thought, ooh, there was some fire in her. Mm -hmm. So fast forward a year and a half later, mm -hmm. I see her again. And she walks into a room that I was, I was sitting at with, a, with, with my cousin. And then I said, hey, how are you? And she's like, I'm fine, thank you. And you? And I was like, okay. So she said, well, but then again, she told, she told, she told my cousin, there's, there's, there's some people at the, at, the, at the reception, they're waiting for you. There's a lot of people and they're really big and they don't have anywhere to sit. And we looked in the security camera and there was nobody at the reception. So my cousin says to me, hey, yeah, I think there's something wrong with her. You know, we're, we're actually whispering to each other. And I'm thinking, well, we should do something, yeah. you know? And I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, how do I tell her mother? I'm sure the mother knows. But how, what, what can we do mm. when we see people yes. sort of going that way? Because that girl's stare just told me there was something wrong. And then the icing on the cake was when she went on to say that there were people, there was a crowd mm -hmm. waiting. There's nobody there. But you know what? We do that a lot. We say, how are you? The person says, I'm fine. And you're looking straight in their face and you know they're not fine. And you go, oh, good. That's great. <laughs> Where uh, we don't press in yeah, anymore, yeah. we don't say. Yeah, but it's not no. my place, though. To, to, Why not? To if you her. care, it's your place. Yes, yes. If you yeah. care, I mean, it's about caring. I mean, sometimes I've gone to the grocery store and the clerk—I don't know who she is—but she's sitting there looking so miserable. And I go, "Can we have a smile? Yeah, have I you do, having I do a that bad too. day? Well, what's going on with you? I mean, and I just—and you know what? It's interesting mm -hmm. when you do that. Somebody's so glad that you asked. 
they just unload. Mm -hmm. And I think that we just have to give ourselves permission to care because I think we've gotten so careful, so guarded. Yeah, but I, I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, you know, anybody. You know, I, I don't want to. Like, but is it an like, offense? The girl's mom is going to probably say, "Well, how dare you call my daughter crazy? Mind your own business. Mind your own business." I mean, that's the society we live in, and yeah. that, it, it goes well, back to the extended maybe family we start as well. With questions. Well, how is your daughter? Have you noticed anything different? You know, and see, because sometimes I think people are defensive because they're protective of the person, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they really want to have an outlet mm -hmm. yeah. because they're worried. It's, but it's if you go in, you know, though. yeah, it's the, the approach. approach. The approach. Mm. Now, <coughs> Michelle, you, you, do, you do a lot of counseling, mm -hmm. you know, so with, with a situation like, you know, you noticing something like this with a friend, yeah. how do you even talk to the friend? Because it's like, it's very sensitive. Yeah. You know, without without seeming like you are judging or you are calling her something she probably isn't. Mm -hmm. You understand know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. these people like that get very defensive. Yeah. Even when you approach them personally, they get defensive. Mm -hmm. how, how do you even approach that? I ask lots of questions. Mm -hmm. Because usually the more questions you ask, the more they begin to reveal. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have to follow the breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. you know, until they're ready to open. I, mm -hmm. You can't force a person to open themselves. Mm -hmm. But if, they, if, if you're talking long enough, they build up a trust. Mm -hmm. And then they start to share. Mm -hmm. So it, it takes time. And I think because we're always in a rush, we don't want to take that path with them. But, but people open up if you take the time. Because um, what's that saying? People don't care how much you know. They just want to know that you care. Mm. You know. Yeah, but what if I tell you and you go and tell somebody? Like, that's you know, that's another, that's another thing. Yeah, that's what well, you of. have to know who you can trust. But, um, and I think that we do know who we can trust. I think sometimes we gamble and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. And then we're disappointed, mm. you know. Mm. Um, so I think you have to be very careful. I think that you have to have that small inner circle that you know you can trust. I mean, people are always unloading on yeah. me. And thank God, I'm very forgetful. Mm. Or I've trained myself to actually be forgetful. Mm. So if somebody tells me a secret, the minute they say this is a secret, I listen, I go, uh-huh, uh-huh. And That's then I forget. dump that information yeah. out. Yeah. because, And I won't even remember it exactly. because... I've just trained myself to do that yeah. because too many people tell me too many things. things so yeah. if, if I said, what, you know, that could just be really bad. <laughs> but you is, know? It, is, it, is it really a lonely world out there? It you know, is the, a lonely the, the world. Saying, as the saying goes, I remember there was a time I, um, I, I went through a class, you know, just before my divorce. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that the counselor spoke to me about was the fact that sometimes people are so depressed that it takes you telling them, hey, I like your lipstick. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. It's just a random person, but yeah. you telling them that, like you're saying, they offload. Yeah. yeah. And maybe that moment, she's walking up to probably go and commit suicide, but you have stopped it at yes. least for, yes. for, for, for exactly. a period, you yes. know, until somebody else probably tells her something nice. Yeah. Right. So in order for you to, it's like it's like a, it's energy you give yeah. and then you take, right. and then she's probably gonna say, "Oh my God, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You are such a pretty lady." Mm -hmm. And that day, you're probably feeling, "Yep, you saved that person." And then, yes, no, yes, all like at yes, the bottom yes, of the yes. chain. You want everybody like, to see you exactly. You're so good, right? No, I mean, no. Even that day when you mm -hmm. told the woman that that mm -hmm. she had nice lipstick, mm -hmm. you probably had a you having a bad headache. Mm -hmm. But then she's probably going to go to. She sees beyond the looks, and she's going to say, "Well, you are such a nice lady." Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's what you also needed to hear exactly. at that moment. So it's like, yeah. You know, there's an exchange. There's an exchange. You so know? I think we need to stop being so guarded. Yeah. I think that we've gotten very, very guarded, very insulated, very isolated. Um, we don't trust people. So we build our little walls. But when you do that, you keep as many people out, out. Yeah. you know, yeah. that you need to let in. Mm -hmm. exactly. So I think that we just have to make some judgment calls yeah. and know that life is, with, is not without risk. Yeah. You know, take the plunge. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll be disappointed. Mm -hmm. But you're not alone even in your disappointment. I mean, exactly. people go through things. And I think that that's why it's important to be vocal mm -hmm. when we're depressed, when we're disappointed, when we're suffering talk about uh, it. from pain. Talk about it. Because you don't know how many people you save by just letting them know that they're not alone. Oh, yeah. how because e for every person that feels the way they feel, there's a hundred other people that feel that way too, and yeah. you go, "Oh, I'm but not some, by myself." Some, someone will say that I just pr I pray, I talk to God about it. Sure, but well, he doesn't talk back. That's yes, he saying. does. He does. He Maybe does. Through somebody, through somebody. God yeah, is but so isn't it? I time. hear God very clearly for really? myself. Oh, I do. He does. Yeah. I do. I do. I'm sorry, I do. Do you hear God? Do you hear him like the way you're hearing us? You know, I hear him different ways. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm praying about something, sometimes I get a thought. Mm -hmm. 
that I wouldn't have had. It's like, hmm. Is that you, Lord? Really? Mm. Is that you, God? You know, kind of a thing. Mm. Or sometimes I just get this feeling like, I call it my knower, mm -hmm. but it's, I think it's the Holy Spirit. It's like, well, I just I mean, get this feeling I that mean, I know that I know something. Michelle, it's so weird, because what I'm praying, I get false all the time, but I, yes. I never thought it was, it was God's, God's, God's Yes, thing. because the God's Holy Spirit thing. sounds like you. He's living inside of you, mm. so he sounds like you. So when he's whispering your ideas to you or, or solidifying, or for me sometimes I just get a peace. Mm. Then I know it's going to be okay. Mm. Or I might open my Bible and something just jumps out. And I've read that verse a hundred times, but that day it just seems so profound and so alive for yeah. me that I know that it is exactly, what you need exactly. Yeah. Or somebody might call me on the phone yeah. and say, I was thinking yeah. about you. And you know, I just want to tell you, blah, blah, blah. And it will be about the thing that yeah. I had prayed to God for. Yeah. So I hear him in different ways, ways. I should say. Yeah. Sometimes I have a dream. So if, I, so if, I, if I'm not a Christian... Uh -huh. And I don't have the Bible, uh -huh. and I don't pray, uh -huh. and or I probably I probably say something. How how do I hear God? Because it takes, you know, it, this is a Christian uh -huh. thing. Yeah. So how about the non-Christian? What, what I do think they do? I think that when when I didn't know Christ, I still had that same sense of knowing. Mm -hmm. I don't think I think there's a, there's a gift inside of us that's there whether we, we've connected to God or not. Oh, no. It just becomes more magnified and we know the source of it when we come into relationship with him. Mm -hmm. But most people have a sense of uh, intuition, mm -hmm. naturally. And, mm -hmm. and if they would listen to that, so the intuition, what is called isn't, isn't, inner isn't voice. The intuition, that is, the intuition is still God's voice, isn't it? Yeah, it could be. It could, it could be. be, it could be another could voice be. too. Yeah. So who's... that's why it's important to know God, so you know which <laughs> voice it is. Okay, so, the, so those who jump, those who jump from... Yeah, God didn't tell them to jump. But they hear, they voices, they hear though. voices, though. But that's <laughs> what I said. It's not always the voice of God that you hear. So the only way you can know God's voice mm -hmm. is to know his word so that you know that it's him talking to you. So that when you hear the voice, you go, that's not a God thing. That, that doesn't... That's not his personality. So I'm not going to do that. So you're no. trying to say the devil also speaks to us. Right? Oh, yes. Yeah, but it, I mean... Okay, that's a, that's a different That's a whole other conversation.